Located on the River Lossie, in a remote part of North Scotland, lies the city of Elgin, where I spent two happy years of my very early childhood, and it is to Elgin that I return as manager of Elgin City Football Club. Will we take Elgin City to glory in Scotland? Will we move on? Will we get sacked? Let's go and find out. Let's go and kick some balls. Hello and welcome back and here we go with the start of FM23 and our first save in FM23 and we are beginning our journey at Elgin City in Scotland. If you are new to the channel then why not subscribe, like, watch, comment, help us to grow, help us to support all that good stuff that you can see scrolling above. And this is going to be a very, very interesting save. As you can see, Elgin City are in League 2 in Scotland and they have pretty much been up and down. They've had the last 20 years have been very, very up and down. They did manage to reach the giddy heights of third place for two seasons. But last season, they only managed ninth out of 10 in League 2. So we've taken over here and we're hoping that we can get them to grow and to become a strong side in Scotland and get into the Premier League, who knows? And today we're going to use this by way of intro to the club. And um, it is a very, very small club. It's a poor club. And although they have had good times in the 60s and they have won a lot of trophies, they've never really been out of League Two. And my job is to get them out of League Two. In terms of the club vision for um, this season and the coming seasons, the board expect us to finish mid-table. So I guess that means around about fourth or fifth. And to be competitive in the Scottish Cup, be competitive in the League Cup and be competitive. I don't know what that means. I guess it just means that you're not going to get hammered in the first round. <laughs> and I'm going to assume that that's what that means. And in terms of the supporters' expectations for the season, they want us to play entertaining football. I don't know if that's going to happen, but we're certainly going to be playing lump it up the pitch football. We'll play a very, very direct style and we're going to be not messing around at the back. We're going to be lumping it up the pitch as fast as we possibly can. And I did have a few heart flutters when I looked at the squad for the first time because I realised that there were no wingers in the squad. And so what we decided to do in terms of tactics, what we've done is that we have developed this 4-1-3-2 system which um, I've used in FM22 and uh, we've got an, another tactic which is the 4-3-1-2 which again I've used in FM22, which doesn't require wingers. We're going to play in a very narrow formation, play through the middle, and we're going to get teams coming into our strength. And hopefully we're going to be taking the ball off them in the centre of the field. Now what we want to do is we want to organise the... We want to trap them inside where our strength is. We're going to drop off more for the coming game. Uh, because we are playing against a very strong opponent. And so when I did look at the, at the squad, I found that we were also a very, very small squad. We've made one or two additions to the squad, and we do have one or two players on trial, and I'll need to make my mind up about whether or not we're going to sign those players. In terms of transfers that have already happened, we have a lot, three players here on loan who are likely to be leaving us at Christmas unless we can extend their loans. But we have brought in Archie Thomas on a free transfer. He's a central midfielder and uh, he looks like he's a decent player. He'll be a good player for the team, I think. And then we brought in a fullback, Nathan Gilhooley, who is a very, very good fullback, and I'm sure that he is going to fit into the team very, very nicely. He's got good attributes for this level, I think, and I'm hoping he's going to have a very, very good season. He has come in on a free transfer. He represents one of our, probably one of our best players we have at the club. We have, we're waiting on. Um, Reese Riddell, we have sold him, I think, 
for 750 pounds. He's a central midfielder, uh, surplus to requirement, and hopefully we'll we'll make a, a few quid on him. And in terms of the squad planner, um, we are a little short at left back. We do need to find a left back. If I can find um, another midfielder, then that will be useful. Um, up front, we have we are fairly strong up front. These two boys, Lawrence and Henderson, are very, very good young players. They will do well as backup, I think. And they've had a good pre-season, those two, as well as our main strikers, um, Dingwell and Hester. Henderson has made himself part of the first team and he's playing very, very well indeed. And for this level, he's got 13 finishing and he scored quite a few goals in pre-season. So we're hopeful that he will do pretty well this season. In terms of training, well, they don't do any training really. They just train on Mondays and Thursdays. And so we're, we're not going to be training them very hard. We're going to be just training them very, very lightly. We want to avoid training injuries. We're going to focus a lot on team bonding for the time being. We're going to do some physical stuff on Monday. But for the rest of the week, it's just going to be very easy type training. In terms of the schedule, what we've got coming up is this cup. We are in a group with Aberdeen, our broth. Kel Kelty Hearts and Montrose. Montrose are both and Aberdeen are much, much stronger teams than we are Aberdeen, of course, in the Premiership. And um, the Montrose and our both are in League One. Kelty Hearts um, are also in League One. We are total underdogs for this and we are going to be playing the first game in that competition today away at Montrose. And we are not expected to do anything. Both the board and the supporters are expecting a defeat. And I also am expecting a fairly hefty drubbing against Montrose. And it is going to be an interesting season. We still have more players to sign. We do have a little bit of money in the bank. We've got a 5,000 transfer budget, which I could use to supplement the wage budget. I'm not intending to buy players, I don't think. What I would like to do is to get players in for free. We are looking at a few. We have got two players already, Kieran Miller, who is a central midfielder, all winning midfielder or box to box. He may well be signed. And also we have a fullback, Reese Peggy, who is a decent fullback and uh, he will do a good job for us, I think, um, as the season goes on when injuries occur. So we are looking at players and we do need to make a few more signings because at the moment our squad is still very, very small. But we remain optimistic, but I do not remain optimistic for this game against Montrose. And so we're going to start our save here in the Premier Sports Cup Group C and we are going to be away at Montrose. I'm not expecting anything, but let's hope we can give a good account of ourselves. So let's go and kick some balls. And so the team for today is Hoban in goal with Cairns, Draper, Anderson and Young at the back, Riddell, Thomas and Cameron in midfield with Dingwell, Hester and Henderson making up a front three attacking threat. At least, that's what I hope it's going to be. And I do know we are not um, in the best of shape at the moment. We're going to auto number, give everybody a good number, and let's go to the match. And hopefully, we'll, we'll come out of this, we'll do, we'll do well, and just come out of this with a decent result. Um, the pressure's all on them, and I have faith in you. Go out and make a difference. You've trained well, you're doing okay. Uh, we have one nervous player in Reese Riddell, and um, but we shall go and go to the match and see what happens. And so let's go to the game and hope that we can at least give a good account of ourselves. We're, we're just going to be playing very direct football, no fancy football here. We're just going to be lumping it up the pitch. And hopefully our front three of Dingwall, Hester and Henderson can put one or two chances away 
I don't feel very optimistic for this game, but you never know what is going to happen. So as long as we give a good account of ourselves here and we don't get absolutely annihilated, I'll be fairly happy. And so the game is underway and um, it is going to be Montrose with the first highlight. And they are a very, very good team, Montrose, and far superior to us. I believe they are in the championship, one below the Premier and um, we need to we need to be on our game here. If we have players having a poor game, then we are going to lose this by a lot. But if we can play some decent football, then we have a chance. Um, but at the moment, it is it is Montrose threatening, and there's a chance, and they have scored. And within four minutes, we are a goal behind. That is not the start I was hoping for. I was never going to be optimistic in terms of this game and we are a goal behind already and they are a good side and I wonder should I bring the line forward a little bit because maybe I'm just going to be inviting them to jump into those spaces so we're going to do that we're going to bring the line up higher so that we close down the spaces and don't allow them the opposition don't allow the opposition to to move into those gaps but they are a goal up and they are dominating the game and they do have a free kick again and the free kick is swung in and there's a chance and it's a good save by the goalkeeper and it remains 1-0 and I looking at the game and how it's going I do feel very very worried and we just need to just lump it up the pitch and we might get on to one or two of these loose balls but we're not winning the ball in midfield, which is what I wanted to do. And we are, but we have, well, we nearly took it off them, but we need to start. I'm going to actually ask them to press a little bit more because we're not actually pressing them enough. And there's another chance and they've made it 2-0. Yeah, I do believe we're going to have to ask them to press a bit more because we're just giving them far too much space, giving them too much time on the ball they've made it 2-0 we're in big trouble <laughs> and it's not the greatest start to the season that I could have wished for but then we are playing a team that is far better than us and what can you say you can only do your best in these situations however we have players who are not playing very well Young is having a poor game Draper who is one of our best players is having a very poor game and I really don't feel like we're playing very, very well at all. And we've had a good pre-season where we have been dominating teams, but when we're coming up against the big boys, we look second best. But here is a chance, and Henderson is through, and he had a chance, and it was saved by the goalkeeper. Henderson has been a good player in pre-season. He's impressed me. That's why he gets his chance to start. And can we get something from this corner? It would be nice to get a goal on the board from this corner as Draper's going to swing in the corner, but that's easily headed away. And we didn't even really look like we were challenging for that. And it is all Montrose. They're dominating chances. They're dominating possession. And we're just not getting our foot on the ball at all and picking up these loose second balls. There's another ball fired long over the top, but it's picked up by Montrose and it's all the way back to the goalkeeper and he will look to launch it long. We need to be strong at the back. Good, strong defending at the back, and we've won that, and Riddell <laughs> absolutely lumps one up the pitch there. Henderson has latched onto it. Can he get a ball into the box? And we have scored. We have pulled one back. Hester has pulled one back, and it is now Montrose 2, Elgin 1. I guess that will count as... Um, I guess that will count as... A um, well, I guess it will count as not getting hammered and being competitive. If we can keep it like this, then I guess that will count as being competitive. It's Montrose 2, Elgin City 1. It's we still aren't out of this game. And uh, Hoban, I thought he picked it up outside the box there, but he didn't. And uh, can we get another one? It'd be really nice if we could get another one. We're playing better since I made the changes, since we're pressing them a little bit more. And here is Riddell. Riddell, he's looking for Cameron. 
Cameron, can he get it into the box? We have players in the box and we have got another one. It's 2-2. What a fantastic comeback. And can we build on this? We are doing very, very well. And whoa, whoa, whoa. We are 2-2 two -two now. What a manager making those changes when we went 2-0 down. And suddenly we looked like a different team. And that was lovely play by Cameron. We were in acres of space. We had two players he could find. It was a lovely low cross. And the reason that that's happening is because we are playing the underlap on that side. And the underlap is allowing the fullback to cross from nearer to the, the penalty area rather than out wide. And that's why that works. And I've used that FM22. And here is another chance. And Hester is in. Hester, can he score? And he fires it straight at the goalkeeper. But Hester has scored and made it 3-2 to Elgin. Oh boy, oh boy. I was not expecting this. I guess this counts as being competitive. What a comeback. 2-0 down after 15 minutes. Hester's having a storming game now. Dingwell put him in. And what a brilliant, brilliant Brilliant save, but Hester picked up the rebound, made it 3-2. We are in the lead. And if we can just hold on to half-time, we'll have a little regroup. And um, we are actually giving as good as we get now. And things are looking pretty good in terms of possession, in terms of chances created. But here come Montrose again with the set piece. And there's a corner into the box, but it's headed away but it comes out to Montrose are they going to score just before half time that's a good tackle that's an oh and yes it's a good tackle uh, but Montrose have got the ball back and they are having a long shot which flies over the bar it remains 3-2 to Elgin and I'll be very pleased going in at half time we are beating a team who are far superior than us I'm just going to tell them I'm absolutely delighted with the number of shots you've had on target. We changed our pattern of play and it seems to have paid off for the moment. And But do Montrose have stuff in their pocket here? Um, but we've won the ball back. And can we... No, we've given it away again. I love FM23 game engine because it is very chaotic and the number of mistakes that players make is absolutely marvellous. It makes the game much more realistic and there's a chance and the goalkeeper's come for it and he's made a complete hash of it but somehow we've managed to survive and Montrose come again and fire a shot over the bar. It remains 3-2 to Elgin. If we can win this, I will be so pleased. And Cameron fires in a free kick for us. And that's headed away. And we have picked up the loose ball, which we weren't doing early on in the game. And this is nice football. Young finds Riddell. And Riddell's looking through, and that has found the goalkeeper. We are playing some decent stuff, and I do believe we deserve to get something out of this game as Montrose try the long ball. But that's picked up by Anderson, who's given it away. And Montrose have scored. And Anderson will have some explaining to do after the game. What a dreadful error. It's now 3-3. Everything looked absolutely in control. Play it back to the goalkeeper. But no, it was an absolute shambles of a mistake. And Anderson may well need to come off. Draper is having a very poor game, I can see. And it's 3-3. And I think Montrose are looking the better side, but we are still in the game. Now, please do not make errors. I've told them the tactic is lump it up the pitch. We do not mess about at the back and we just need to get it forward. And yet we are messing about at the back. And this always worries me with lower league teams. Now, can we get onto this loose ball? No, Montrose have managed to get onto it. I think maybe it's time to make some changes because Montrose are absolutely dominating the game now. And there is a chance. And they have got a chance and they've gone 4-3 up. And having turned that around, we are now behind again. And Draper's having an absolute shocker. I am going to berate the team. Um, they were absolutely dreadful. And I think it's now time to make some changes. Uh, Draper, who's one of the best players at the club, is having an absolute shocker. 
and uh, it is now time to go and make some changes I think and so we've just made a couple of changes for the time being and I don't know if it's going to be good enough we've taken off Draper who is having an absolute shocker but I can see that Thomas now needs to come off he's very tired but we have won the ball back and here is Anderson Anderson looking long and that's what we want to do and hope that the pace of the front three and we have intercepted and there is a chance but I think Henderson was half asleep but he has won the ball back and there is Hester with a chance and it flies over the bar and another example there of how the mistakes in in FM23 are absolutely causing chaos and we're going to make another couple of changes I think but we'll do it after this highlight because we do have a number of tired players and that's headed clear, nicely headed clear. But Montrose are a better team. They're looking better. That's a lovely cross into the box. It's just a bit too long and they are looking to get it back into the box. It's deflected up and that should be cleared and hopefully that is the end of the highlight. But it is Montrose coming back, but we've intercepted the ball. Can we get it forward? This is what we want to do, find space. That's a lovely ball over the top. And here is Hester again, but he's hit it straight at the goalkeeper. It remains 4-3. We've had chances and we haven't taken them. And that's not what I want to see in games like this. We should have taken that. Hester, who's been in good form, he should have scored. But we do have a corner and it's into the box. It's headed clear. It comes to Anderson. Anderson gives it back to Henderson. Can we get it into the box? Yes, we can. It's headed clear. It falls to Nick. Oh, son, it's fired over the crossbar. It remains 4-3. We've done ourselves proud and I'm going to make some more changes now. And so we've made a couple of changes, but I don't think it's going to make any difference. It's Montrose 4, Elgin City 3. It is Montrose with the corner. And there's a chance that goes over the crossbar. And we've done ourselves proud. They are two, two leagues above us. And so coming away with a 4-3 defeat, we've done ourselves proud. I can't be too angry with them. We, we did match them very, very well. Um, but I'm going to say if we look at the numbers, we should have won that game. And possibly we should have got something out of it. But we are at, at the bottom of the table and that doesn't please me very much and if we look at the schedule we've got even worse fixtures coming up Aberdeen from the Premiership our growth from League League One and those are diff difficult difficult uh, matches we need to just focus on keeping morale up and um, that's it for this first video of our first FM23 save. If you are new to the channel, why not subscribe, like, watch, comment, help us to grow, help us support all that good stuff that you can see scrolling above. And so from a fairly disappointed Elgin City here, where the fans and the board and myself will be fairly disappointed that we didn't at least come away with a point there, I will bid you all farewell and I will see you in the next episode.